thank you once again for tuning us in. We pray that everything that is said and done today would be for one reason, that's to bring honor and glory to our Heavenly Father. We want to take this opportunity, as always, to invite you to come and worship with us at Tell Street Baptist Church. I sincerely believe from the bottom of my heart that we are a church that really cares. We're trying to reach the lost in the community and see Christians of all faith drawn closer to God. So we would like for you to come out and visit with us. It's certainly not our intention to take anyone from their home church, but if you don't have a church home, come and visit with us. We're located 1,002 33rd Street in Tell City, Indiana. That's across the street from the Armory. Our services begin on Sunday morning Sunday school at 9.45, our morning worship service at 10.45, our training union starts at 6.10, and then our evening worship service at 7. We also have a midweek Bible study and prayer time on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, so we want to invite you to come and be with us. My wife and I want to sing a couple songs for you now, and then we'll have the morning message. Our first song is entitled, The Longer I Serve Him, The Sweeter He Grows. This is a favorite of ours, and so we covet your prayers as we sing this for God's glory. Breathe. 
enjoyed those songs. We enjoyed doing them for you, and we just always pray that God receives the glory and the honor for him. I want to again just, just make a few more comments about our church. We're overly thankful for the way that God has blessed our church, people coming into our church and souls being saved, and at the present time, we're in the process of adding on to our church. We're adding on to the back end of our church and putting more Sunday school rooms in the basement, and then a little later on, uh, we're going to add uh, more room in the sanctuary. As I stated, I believe last week, we'll have a seating capacity of, uh, of probably a little over 250 people. And uh, we hope to have everything done before uh, summer's gone. We have a, a location there that we're just very proud of, that we've got plenty of expansion room, and we thank God for that, for somebody making plans way back several years ago. So uh, we would ask you to pray for our church and pray for us as we attempt to do God's will. And it certainly is our intention to always follow, uh, follow the leadership of the Spirit of God in all that we do. We want to go to the Lord in prayer at this time and uh, seek his leadership. We ask you to pray with us as we pray that truly God would be lifted up. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the many blessings of life. We thank you, Father, for the privilege we have of, of assembling ourselves together from time to time. We thank you, Father, for being able to make this radio broadcast. And we know, Father, as the words go out and, and penetrate the hearts and lives of individuals that you'll be blessed by it. And so, God, we just ask you to lead us Lead us in the message today and, and lead us in all that we do that other people might see Jesus in the way that we conduct our day. Bless those, we pray, Father, that might be uh, physically ill today, those that might be shut in or whatever the problem might be. Father, I pray that you might minister to them in a very, very special way, touch their hearts and their lives. And, Father, fill them with an overflowing uh, of the Spirit of God. Father, we want to pray for those that are physically ill today, are spiritually ill, rather, Father, that they might receive a touch from heaven, that you might convict their hearts, that, God, that if they're lost, they, they need to be saved, and we ask you just to convict them, and if they're in a backslidden state, we ask you to speak to their hearts today. Guide us now as we go into the message, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to make just one other announcement before we go into the message. On June the 22nd, at 7.30 each evening, running from June 22nd through Saturday night of that week, Brother Steve Epley and I and many other people have been praying about a revival in the Rome, Indiana area. And we've prayed at a date of June 22nd of starting revival there in Rome on a Monday evening at 7.30. And we covet your prayers for this Rome, Indiana revival. And if you live in the, the Rome, Indiana area, any way nearby there, we ask you to come out. We're going to have, uh, try to plan some gospel singing uh, every night of the revival. And who knows what God could possibly lead us into there. So we ask you to support us and, and to pray for us and to visit with us and to invite others to come. June 22nd, 7.30 each evening in Rome, Indiana. We'll have the service in the old courthouse there. We've got permission to have the, the service in the courthouse, and, and we'll set up church there. 
We'll preach the word to the best of our ability, we promise you. So do pray for us and pray for Brother Steve, pray for myself, and pray for all those that will be involved. Now we'd like to go into the message of the morning entitled, Ye Must Be Born Again. There's a song that I often mention related to the subject. It says a ruler once came to Jesus by night to ask him the way of salvation and life. The mas master made answer with words true and plain, ye must be born again. Then he goes on to say, ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. I verily, verily say unto thee, ye must be born again. In the Gospel of John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 8, you'll find these words. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. And let us pause long enough just to say this that Nicodemus had recognized who Jesus was and undoubtedly had talked about it with uh, others uh, because he says, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. He goes on to say in that second verse, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Verse 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, Well, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Then verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel that I say unto you, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it willeth. And thou hearest the sound of it, but canst not tell from where it cometh and where it goeth. So it is with everyone that is born of the Spirit. Friends, I cannot explain to you in detail the, the, the mystery of the new birth. Nicodemus was an educated man. Nicodemus was a ruler. He was one of the leaders of that day. He was a ruler, the Bible says, uh, in, in the first verse. A ruler of the Jews. And he recognized who Jesus was. And he began to inquire of Jesus. And Jesus plainly told him, Nicodemus, You'll not even be able to see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. Nicodemus had no idea at that time what he was talking about, even though no doubt he was a very educated man. He said, what do you mean, Master? Do you mean I must enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, no. And in essence, my friend, and I will stake my life on the messages that I preach, that I am preaching under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. This message was given to me by God, and I'll preach it to the very best of my ability. But he was speaking here about another birth, not the fleshly birth, but he was speaking here about another birth. And I believe that when he told him that which is born of the flesh, he was talking about the physical birth, but he says when that which is born of the spirit is spirit, he was talking about another birth. 
And he was letting Nicodemus know that the first birth, the fleshly birth, was not enough. That was only good enough to enter into the human race. But in order to enter into the family of God, ye must be born from above. You must be born of the Spirit. And there's no other way, my friend, to enter into eternal life except being born again, which changes you and changes your nature. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I have a little small Christian-like New Testament with the Psalms, and I love the little book very, very much. It has 15 major outlines in the front part of the Bible. And I spend a lot of time reading and studying from these little master outlines. And on the one uh, in the front part of this little Bible on the new birth, it talks about being transformed and being changed, how we enter into the family of God. And it says, the second birth is of the seed of God. Therefore, you cannot become a child of God by joining a church any more than a monkey could become a man by joining the human race. He may act like a man, he may dress like a man, he may try to live like a man, but he'll still be a monkey. Now, by some miracle, the monkey could be born again of the seed of man. Then and only then could he become a man. The only way, my friend, to become a child of God is to be born from above by the incorruptible seed of God. That, my friend, is the new birth. And over and over I've repeated myself by, by saying I've heard people say, but but I'm a good moral person, Brother Christley. But Brother Christley, I go to the church every time the doors open. Brother Christley, I support all the different activities in the community. I give my finances, I give my time, and I do this and I do that. My friend, that will not get you to heaven because the Bible says, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. So you cannot work your way in. You can only be saved by the grace of Almighty God. In the book of Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, here the story is plainly told. In the second chapter of the book of Ephesians, beginning at the first verse, and you hath he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now let me pause long enough to go back and just cover a little bit of ground. You, my friend, and all the people in the world who were born in this fleshly body was born with our great-grandfather Adam's Adamic nature. We are sinners by nature. And as long as we remain in this body and in this fleshly life, there's going to be sin that will corrupt the mind and corrupt the body. Because God says in Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned, all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. So every person born in the world is born into sin. And until a new life has taken place within them, until they have experienced a new birth, they will die and go to an eternal hell. Regardless of how good morally they've been. Even though we certainly would encourage a person to be good morally. It doesn't make a bit of difference if you've never drank, you've never smoked, you've never run out on your wife, you've never done this, you've never done that. If you haven't been born again, you are doomed for a devil's hell. You 
say, well, that doesn't seem fair. Whether it's fair, whether it isn't, that's what God's Word says. And if God says it, then we have to believe it and we have to preach it. It can't be no other way. So he says in you, in the second chapter again of Ephesians, the first verse, and you have been made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we had our manner of life in times past, in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath made us alive together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. Ephesians, friends, the second chapter. I just concluded reading the first five verses. And I want to continue on. Listen to it, please. Let me go back and reread the re -read the verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, have made us alive together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. Notice that, please. By grace are ye saved. And we'll pick up on that in just a few more verses here. And hath raised us up together and made us to sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Now listen carefully to the 8th verse, 2 Corinthians, 2nd chapter, verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Verse 9 says, not of works, least any man should boast. Not of works, least any man should boast. Is it so hard to understand that we are saved by the merciful grace and love of God? Because He loved us. He is willing to save us. If we're willing to turn from the wicked world and repent and turn on over to Jesus... He is willing to come into our life and to re forgive us of our sins and to make that new person out of us that he wants us to be. Friend, won't you today heed to the voice? Won't you today ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and life and save your soul and deliver you from that destiny of hell? Oh, but Brother Christley, you might be saying, Oh, but Brother Christley, it sounds too easy. Let's go back, if we can, just for a moment, to that eighth verse of John, the third chapter. The Bible says, The mystery there, the wind bloweth where it willeth, and thou hearest the sound of it. But you can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of God, friend. Listen, I do not understand it completely. It's so hard to preach and, and explain to people that just by the mercy of God, if we'd only be willing to say yes to Jesus and turn from our wicked way, he'd take us in to his kingdom. And that's what he's telling Nicodemus in that Verses of scripture there in John, Nicodemus, he said, you can't even enter into the kingdom of God unless you've been born again. Friend, you've got to be. You must be. There's no other way to gain the entrance into heaven only by accepting Jesus Christ into your heart and life. Once again, let me read that verse of scripture, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Are those verses of scripture, rather? For... By grace are ye saved through faith. That word faith is believing in him. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. 
It is a gift of God, not of works. You see, my friend, there's no way that you can work your way in. Absolutely no way. Again, let me repeat, we certainly encourage a person to do work after he's been saved, but you can't work to get saved. After God saves you, you ought to get busy doing things for God to bring honor and glory to his precious, wonderful, marvelous name. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Oh, don't boast, my friend, and say I'm working my way in by attending the church every time the doors open, or by giving to a, a charity program of some nature, or by giving your tithes to the church, even though we'd certainly encourage that because we believe it's Bible. But you cannot gain entrance into eternal life, into the kingdom of God, by works. We encourage baptism, but baptism does not save anyone. There is no saving power in the water. It's a divine command. It's an outward expression of an inward experience. And we're buried with him in baptism on a symbolic basis as Christ died and was buried and arose again. And we are dead to the old world and, and we, we are buried and we raised to a newness of life. Ever to walk in a newness of life should be our attitude. That's what Christ wants us to do. Won't you today receive this Jesus? Won't you today? Let's go back to John just for a moment for one, just one verse of scripture there. John, the first chapter, verse 12. Listen to it, my friend. If you have your Bible, look it up in your Bible. Try to follow me along from Sunday uh, from Sunday to Sunday, if you would, and, and just, you know, check me out, I say a lot of times. See if I'm really preaching from the Word of God. See if I'm really saying it like it is and preaching it like it is. In the 12th verse of John, the first chapter, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. Friend, take the name of Jesus with you. Allow Jesus to work in your heart and life. Give him a chance. Just give him a, a chance at your life. Oh, I know. I know, my friend. I've, I've used the same old excuses. But, Brother Christley, it's so hard to live. It's, it's too difficult. Listen, you're trying it on your own. And when you give your life to Jesus, then you've got him with you. And friend, listen. Listen to me. Listen to these words. You and God are a majority. You can do it. You can make it. He's promised never to leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age, to the end of the world. He's there. He's there. You can do it. Oh, but I'm an alcoholic. But God can deliver you from alcoholism. Oh, but Brother Christley, I've got this in my life or that. But God can deliver you from these things. But I'm a wicked man. I'm a mean man. Or, or I'm a wicked woman. Or I do this. But God can deliver you from those things. He'll make you a new person if you'll only allow him. Won't you today? Be born again, be born from above by receiving Jesus Christ into your heart and life. Make that decision. And if you don't have a church, come and share it with us at Tell Street Baptist Church. Let us pray. Father, again, we want to thank you in the name of Jesus for the privilege, for every privilege, Lord, that we have to be able to speak over this radio broadcast. We thank you, Father, for making the broadcast possible. And Father, we realize that if only one soul, if only one soul there is, is touched today, it's worth all of the effort and all the time that we can put into it. God, we pray that you minister to those in need today. Convict the soul, Father. Touch the heart. In Jesus' 
holy name we pray. Amen. Now let me again invite you to come out and be with us at Tell Street Baptist Church. Come out tonight at 7 o'clock for our evening worship service. In fact, come earlier, come 610 for our training union time, a time that we get together and share the love of Christ. Won't you do it? Won't you do it today? Now, friend, listen to me. You go with God, and he will go with you. This is Brother Charles Chrysler, the pastor of Tell Street Baptist Church, saying thank you once again for tuning us in. If I can ever be of any service to you, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Post Office Box 214, Hallsville, Kentucky. <laughs>